A crisp winter morning and a cross-country skier makes tracks. But this is no ordinary outing and this is no ordinary outdoorsman. Tell people I'm going to do something like this, they say, oh man, you must be crazy or something. Dr. Gordon Giesbrecht is a thermophysiologist, a top researcher on hypothermia and the impact of cold on the human body. And whether for research or to teach life-saving techniques, the University of Manitoba professor sometimes goes to extremes. What seems like a deadly situation is in fact a controlled demonstration of how to survive after falling into a frozen lake. Dr. Giesbrecht has done this before, and emergency crews are standing by. But the frigid water is still very real, just two degrees above freezing. It immediately startles the body in what's called the cold shock phenomenon. Get to some area where we can get some stability and just let the gas and get... It'll die down after about a minute. What happens when you get really cold, your skin, cold skin starts a cold shock response, which gets you to, you first start gasping and hyperventilating and breathing way more than you need to. And that's really bad if your head goes under the water when you gasp the first time and you drown immediately. Though hard to believe in this terrifying situation, you may actually have more time than you think. The cold shock will last, uh, depending on different people, between one and three minutes. And the real important thing to know is that, that you'll get over that. Uh, you don't practice it, but just trust me, you will get over it. So when you, if you do ever fall into cold water, the main thing you need to think about for the first minute is just not drowning. You don't have to get out. You don't have to do anything else. Just get over that. It just try and get your breathing under control and when that happens then you've got some time to try and do other things like get out after catching your breath and taking off the skis the next goal is to find the best escape route so what you want to do is go back to where you came in because that ice is holding you until you went in so it's good to to try and get back to there now a common mistake is people just try to pull themselves straight up and you try to do that. There's no way. There's no way you can get out. Now remember, there's no panic here. My breathing is under control. I've got a window of between two to five minutes where I'll have enough strength to get out of here. So what I'm gonna do is kick my feet, try and get, try to get my body horizontal, now it's like that. Kick and pull. Kick and pull. Now remember, the ice is weak because I just fell in. So I don't want to stand up. What I want to do is roll away. Roll away. When I get a little farther, maybe I'll start crawling. But I don't want to stand up until I'm well and truly away from the, from the hole. Incredibly, Dr. Giesbrecht gets back into the bone-chilling water to continue the exercise. The numbness is set in because I didn't, I didn't even feel getting back in there. <sighs> the most important thing for a bystander that, to think about when they come upon a scene where someone's in the water is safety of themselves. We don't want to have another victim. Do not run out onto the ice and think you're going to be a hero. You want to take your time, stop, think. Uh, you want to send somebody for help if there is somebody there. If you're by yourself and you've got a cell phone, take your time and phone. You want to reassure the victim, tell them that you're there to help them, tell them to try and relax, and uh, get help on the way. And always try to talk them out of the water first. Keep kicking. Get your hands up on top of the ice. Start kicking with your feet. Keep kicking. Keep kicking. I can't do it. If the victim has lost the strength to get out, find an object to throw, like an extension cord. It's important to tie a, a loop on the end of it so that they have something to grab onto. And I want you to put the, loop, the, the noose around your arms, and I'll pull you out. Okay. In rope-type rescues, it's also important to use the loop to hook onto an elbow. And if there are no objects to throw, find something to extend, like a long branch. I got a ladder here. 
Within the city, uh, a lot of times it's a retention pond and there are houses around. You can go or, or send someone to get a ladder or an extension cord and reach, reach out to the victim with that. It's now been nine minutes since Dr. Giesbrecht first entered the water. I'm feeling pretty cold and I'm getting pretty weak. Right. I'm not sure. I don't think, I actually don't think I can get out of here. Can you? Okay, so as it is, I can't get out of here. So the bottom line is, unless somebody comes to rescue me right now, I'm basically gonna become unconscious and drown. Well, I've got actually a long time before I would die of hypothermia. So what I wanna do right now is widen the window of opportunity for the rescue team to get here. If I haven't gotten out of here within five to 10 minutes, I'm not gonna get out. So if I just thrash around, I'm gonna lose more heat and I'm gonna get exhausted and I'll drown even quicker. You wanna stop thrashing around and I won't be wasting heat and I won't be exhausting myself. So I try and relax. I get my arms out, get as much of my body out of the water as possible because I'll lose less heat from that area. At a given temperature, water takes heat away from the body about 25 times faster than air at the same temperature. So in just about all conditions, it's better to have as much of the body out of the water as in. So this is about as much as I can do. So at this point, I'm just gonna get my arms on the ice and I'm gonna keep them here and not move them. It might sound a little silly, but if I'm lucky, my arms will freeze to the ice before I become unconscious. If I become unconscious and I just slip down here, I'll drown. But if I become unconscious and my arms are frozen to the ice, I'll at least be here for a little bit longer. There have actually been a number of cases where people have been so cold they become unconscious, but they were frozen to the ice and, and they were rescued and they survived uh, because either their arms or their beard, for instance, was even frozen to the ice. Approaching the 15 minute mark, Dr. Giesbrecht has one last point to make an icy illustration of something you want to avoid at all costs. Okay, we're ready for rescue now. Finally, the professionals slide in to fish him out. But even after all that time, he's still not quite hypothermic. People are often surprised when I tell them that you could live for an hour or two in ice water if you do everything right. But we all know about the Titanic, and uh, we've heard stories of people in lifeboats who listened to screams for an hour or two uh, from the victims who were in life jackets, so they didn't drown. So they actually lived long enough to die of hypothermia. In the water, Dr. Giesbrecht's body temperature may have fallen half a degree. While warming up, it actually loses another degree in what's known as the after drop. And this causes intense shivering. But with the help of a hot beverage and a body heater, the professor's core temperature returns to normal in about an hour. Some may wonder if the cold doctor is truly a mad scientist for taking such risks. But Dr. Giesbrecht's goal is to save lives with such dangerous demonstrations. And even if people remember only one point, he hopes it's this simple lesson. Stay off the ice. You really don't want to go through what I went through today. Uh, very uncomfortable and very, very dangerous and might cost your life.